Some Cameroonian artists have vowed to stand by the new artist copyright uh, corporation as the talk of war between the Prime Minister's office and the Minister for Arts and Culture continues. In this edition of the news, 25 years after its creation, the party has not taken power in the country. Tomorrow, 26th of May 2015 marks exactly 25 years since the Social Democratic Front Party was created. We get an exclusive interview of the chairman, Nijon Frunzi, at his Dancon residence in this edition of the newscast. Thanks for joining us in Monday's edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. We we'll begin with speed of fire outbreak in the economic capital Douala. The Sobom neighborhood was last week and hit by a fire disaster that claimed the lives of a the life of a woman and three of her children. The cause of the disaster, which started by midnight Saturday, is still unknown. Other victims say the future is uncertain. Mimi Mefo now travel to Sobom and brought back the following report for the 6 p.m. news. This is the remnants of two clackboard apartments that went into flames Saturday by midnight. No item was recovered from the disaster whose exact cause is yet to be established. Pelagi is a close neighbor to the victims. She recounts a story of how the disaster unfolded in the middle of a heavy downpour. She says that her efforts at rescuing her neighbor who was struggling in the white flames were fruitless. A greater part of her body were already affected by the time other locals were alerted, she explains. Otangs was mother of three children. Sejo, 16, Sandra, 10 year old, and Yuyu, a year and a half, who all perished into the flames. Their mother died on her way to the hospital. One of the apartments who went into flames belonged to this couple that have been living here for five years. The parents of three were on a journey when the incident occurred. He says that the rate of damage has been put at some 3 million francs CFA, including other valuables consumed by the flames. They barely know how life would continue from here, and they are still in a state of shock. Concordant sources have revealed that the disaster was neither provoked by a gas bottle nor poor electric connections. Firefighters who were notified failed to show up on time. By the time of this report, the deceased mother and her three children were at the Lacantini Hospital Mortuary pending barrier. Uh. <laughs> And they need, therefore, for surrounding residents at the National Petroleum Depot to quit the area has once again come in the limelight. This is after scores of homes were last week and brought to ashes after a fire incident. Environmental experts have revealed that the illicit sale of fuel is a common phenomenon to locals. Our reporter Mimi Mefo talked to a Douala based expert and compiled this report. Between Thursday and Saturday last week, the National Petroleum Depot was hit by two fire disasters. Scores of houses were reduced to ashes and a life lost in the incident which unfolded late Friday. In an attempt to get answers from an environmental expert who has in several outings not ceased to denounce the danger that the SCDP poses to local inhabitants, we were told that the population can be partly blamed. A finding by DJ Yimkwa reveals that the illegal trafficking of petrol is a common practice championed by surrounding residents with the aid of officials of SADP. A fire disaster, according to him, in houses where petrol is illegally stored for sale was therefore inevitable. 
Ça veut tout simplement dire qu'il y a des complicités à l'intérieur de la société. Besides, the health of surrounding residents continue to be at risk if a timely alternative is not provided. Et ça a un impact sur la santé. Vous savez très bien que quand... The area is hosting thousands and one of the biggest markets in the sub-region and the environmental experts believe that the only solution is for them to be relocated. Que ce quartier-là soit délocalisé parce que... After contributing a sum of over 13 million francs CFA as war efforts, SDF militants today engage in a human investment campaign in prelude to the celebration of Siva Jubilee, a quarter of a century existence. The SDF party was created on May 26, 1990, amid contestations against the relaunch of multipartism in Cameroon. The national chairman was held under house arrest for two months. Let's now come back to the context within which the SDF party was created. Before May 26, 1990, Cameroon was under the one-party system with the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement as a single party. Five years after the birth of the CPDM party, Nijon Frundi, chairman of the SDF, says there was a growing need for another party, the return to multipartism. The return to multipartism in Cameroon was not accepted by all Cameroonians. Some persons took to the streets to denounce the idea, which was already being nursed in the Northwest region. And it was hell on Bamenda. I had quite a lot of forces. I had quite a lot of uh, calls from uh, certain senior citizens uh, to the fact that we should postpone the launching. Against all the odds, some Northwest elite went ahead to launch the SDF party in Tarikong, Northwest. The national chairman today can still recall that day as if it was yesterday. 26th of May 1990 was a worrisome day in this town where they had sent over 2,000 troops to police the town. You didn't know with whom you were traveling and they were all in Mufti. You could not identify a policeman, but you knew that they were around. Then left here, they were okay, we we're just going up. As soon as we got up to the road there, we said we'll go to Tarugol Park and went to launch a party in Tarugol Park because we could not launch it in this compound. The after effect of the dawn of a new era was devastating. Persons were persecuted, arrested, imprisoned, tortured. Six persons, according to the SDF party, were killed by armed forces by the Yaounje regime hall that they died after a stampede. SDF chairman was under house arrest for two months. My mother was seriously beaten by gendarmes. They wounded her seriously. She was crying. I don't know whether you've ever pictured or seen your mother being beaten and you're looking. The whole you cannot go to defend your mother who delivered you from the brutal hands of a gendarme. Kicking my mother into the gutter, she bruised all her knees and her she was crying, telling me in the dialect, my son, if I die, don't give up. You are dying because of people, not for yourself. You know, I was there also crying like a baby. 25 years now, the Social Democratic Front Party is yet to take power. Militants say the struggle shall continue, and that power will be taken through the ballot box. And some persons lost their lives in 1990. Others were persecuted after the launch of the Social Democratic Front Party. Now, 25 years after, some victims recorded the untold hardship they suffered during the, that period with determination to continue the fight and the struggle for democracy. Jacques Ekwekinge tells us more. We shall be coming back to that report by Jacques Ekwekinge to tell us more about the, some victims of the 1990 launch of the Social Democratic Front Party in the course of this newscast. The tussle between the PM's office and the Ministry of Arts and Culture over the closure of Soka Sim is not yet over as some Cameroonian artists have vowed to stand by the new artists' copyright cooperation where work is going on normally despite the uh, PM's uh, closure. And Roland Akon visited Soka Sim today and filed this report for Miaunde. The office of Soka Sim in Yaoundé, work is going on normally, despite a prime ministerial decision last week withdrawing the license of the new Autos Rights Corporation. We had already more than 1,400 
uh, artists at the race. Speaking to Equinox, D.S. Binta, a senior staff of Sokasim, says Sokasim already had 1,400 members before the Prime Ministerial decision of last week, and that many more artists are coming to register their works. Ce lundi matin, les artistes ont déjà passé la 9. Another senior staff of Sokasim says that Sokasim still has its license. L'agrément est là et le travail se passe très And that business is going on as usual in the head office of the Autos Rights Corporation. He even hints that the corporation is preparing to give out copyright dues to artists soon. Eh bien, nous préparons d'ailleurs les répartitions et... Tous les artistes sont sereins. Explaining why some Cameroonian artists still believe in Soka Sim, despite the withdrawal of his license by the PM's office, Joseph Franklin Boati, another senior staff of Soka Sim, says the Prime Ministerial decision last week closing Soka Sim is illegal. He even says the Prime Ministerial decision is a non-event. Non the artists have warned that they are not going to accept an ad hoc committee at the PM's office to manage their royalties. Nous n'allons pas accepter que ces gens-là gèrent notre argent. With these developments, the tussle between the PM's office and the Minister of Arts and Culture over the creation of the authorized corporation in Cameroon and the management of authorized dues in Cameroon is far from over. I were telling you a while ago about some victims of 1990 after the launch of the SDF party and just to know that today there was human investment in the northwest region where the chairman Nijon Frundi uh, personally took part in a football match. And to come back to that story by Jacques Ekwekinge who now takes us to meet some three persons who lived 1990. His report. The period leading up to the launching of the SDF a party that is from 1990 up to 1992 was plagued by multiple persecutions suffered by many who rallied behind Ni John Frundi to advocate for democracy in Cameroon. Launched on the 26th of May 1990 in Bamenda, the Social Democratic Front Party militants and even the chairman have suffered untold hardship and even deaths like the case of the six youths killed on the day of the launching. 25 years after, some militants of the SDF party who suffered persecution due to their activities remember vividly some of those challenging moments. At one year, they say, sell and pine. That's what they talk. I told They say, madam, here and say, don't have what? They don't take me now. We go for BMM. After the launching, people now were jubilating and going back home. Then now, curious people who wanted to that they must pass through the commercial avenue they must come to where they were they they they, 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 they have stopped them not to pass curious people now the the mob of people that's where we had some people who were shot down six people were killed and like in the 1972 referendum most victims suffered persecution by just joining the bandwagon without a full knowledge of what was going on after me to have to follow the support as i be the support they will come up. They will come up. See, come up. Apart from recalling past memories, some of the victims still have physical proof of the persecution they suffered during the launching of the SDF in Bamenda. It was in 1991, precise 2nd of October 1991, where you hear of those terms like Black Wednesday, and then you have grenade victims. I'm one of them. Uh, and a helicopter was you now hovering the air, throwing grenades and tear gas here and there with uh, foot soldiers doing the same thing. Uh, yeah, and so in the process, myself and some other unfortunate youths were, were affected. Nonetheless, these bitter memories seem not to discourage these SDF militants who hold strong that change will come one day to Cameroon only through the SDF party. Thanks for that report. We take you to news out of the country now. Our very first stop in Tunisia, where a Tunisian soldier has been shot dead after he killed seven of his colleagues at a military barracks in the capital, Tunis. The man is reported to have had family and psychological issues and was warned not to carry out arms. We have details with Euronews. Tunisian authorities say family problems led to a soldier shooting dead seven people at a military base in Bouchoucha 
in the capital Tunis on Monday. The victims reportedly included a colonel. Ten other soldiers were hurt in the exchange of fire, in which the attacker was also shot dead. The incident alarmed a capital city still on edge after an attack in March by Islamist gunmen on the Bardo National Museum, in which 21 foreigners were killed. Helicopters patrolled the skies and a nearby school was evacuated. Police also entered and searched a nearby mosque and roadblocks stopped and checked passing cars while the surrounding area was swept. And still in news out of the country, it is exactly one month now since the disastrous 7.8 earthquake magnitude that killed close to 9,000 persons and left 1 million displaced in Nepal. Victims were remembered today, but eight workers have warned crisis could worsen the DWTV. Destruction wherever you look in Nepal's capital Kathmandu. Street sellers spread out their wares in amongst the mounds of rubble. Just getting by is still a struggle for most. People are scared because of the continuing aftershocks. Many of our houses are cracked or damaged and people are living in tents. It's all very frightening. We are still living under plastic sheeting. We don't even have a tent. We are scared and worried and have no idea how many more months this will continue. Across Nepal today, people have been remembering the nearly 9,000 victims of last month's quake. The tremors destroyed nearly a million homes and many survivors are now living in improvised shelters. More stable structures will be needed once the monsoon season starts in two weeks' time, but Nepal's government is struggling to cope with the scale of the task. We receive nothing from the government. Over there, an organization is providing us with free food, and we cook ourselves. Those who have money can buy food at the market, but experts warn that food prices are likely to soar as the effects of ruined harvests come to be felt. In northern Nepal, the situation remains precarious. The earthquake has increased the risk of avalanches. Here in the Kaligandaki River Valley, thousands of locals have left their homes for safety at higher altitudes. Nepal will need international assistance for years to come, but so far the United Nations has only received a fifth of what it needs to tackle the crisis. And about 129 graves have been discovered in northern Malaysia, including 28 abandoned camps that allegedly belong to human traffickers. It is feared the number could be considerable. DWTV once again. Human remains recovered from one of the many graves in northern Malaysia. Investigators carry them away in white bags. The operation to retrieve the first body from the dense rainforest lasts several hours. The body was found in a barn measuring 14 by 7 meters. The body had been separated into three parts. Three items of clothing were found with it. We'll send the body to the pathologist to determine the cause of death. 139 mass graves and abandoned migrant detention camps were discovered in the northern province of Perlis. It's just a short distance from where 26 bodies were found earlier this month, over the border in Thailand. They're believed to be the remains of refugees from Myanmar and Bangladesh. Refugees like these Muslim Rohingyas are targeted by traffickers who use the dense forest as cover for their illegal activities. There's hundreds who didn't make it. They could not walk. Some of them, we know, made it to Malaysia in wheelbarrows. Some of them made it on the backs of their friends. But a lot of them, perhaps hundreds, which is what we're finding, are buried between, in the forests between Thailand and Malaysia. Officials fear some 500 refugees could be buried in these woods, having died at the hands of people traffickers. The quest for medals. We are now in sport. is on at the 18 varsity games taking place at the campus of University of Yaoundé One in Guayaquile and the University, the National Institute for Youth and Sport (INGS) has two gold medals. Meantime, the University of Chiang back a gold medal today in aerodynamic wheelchair, 800 meters. Roland Akong was there for the news. The medal count in the 18th University Games has started in athletism with the University of Chang winning gold 
in the 800 meter ladies of the aerodynamic wheelchair. I'm very happy, I'm very happy. And I say thank you to my coach who assists us during the training. And thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for all. The aerodynamic wheelchair is an innovation in the Paralympic sports in the University Games this year. It's the first time we are using aerodynamic uh, uh, chair because uh, wheelchair. Because last time they were using tricycle, but in any competition in international system, we can use it. So uh, it's better to follow the international system by using aerodynamic uh, wheelchair. Another innovation in the games this year is the female wrestling. The Gulf Institute of Douala wins gold in the 100 meter race for men. <laughs> Yes, I'm very happy. Yes. <laughs> the other athletic disciplines enter high gear Wednesday with finals. Over 19 institutions are competing in nine disciplines in the 18th University Games on the campus of the University of Yaoundé 1. And from there we talk as a football now, the 17th action of the National League 1 Football Championship of the Professional Football League of Cameroon that took place across Stadia at the weekend. It was a Lyon Blessé that beat Tekase of Yaoundé by two goals to nothing, recording the biggest score at the weekend. One outside tie between Ape Jason Fu and Pante of Nde in Bafo Sam. It was Fovu of Baham that played a zero outside with UMS of Loom. In Bafang Unispo of the Open Camp played a zero outside with As of Dualan and a, an Anglophone derby between Yalakwan Sports Academy and Young Sport Academy of uh, Bamenda ended one in favor of Young Sport and matches that were postponed for Wednesday 27 May. Kanong will clash with Cosmos and Dragon will play against Bamboo Tools of Mbuda. Meantime, Union of Duala against New Stars. The match will be coming up on the 30th of May and Botafogo will clash against Coton Sport of Garwa, 30th of May. That does it for the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Thanks for watching. Good night.